tell me this, uh, if you would tell, share with us how being at United has helped you in your ministry. Okay, well, let me say thank you for the interview and that United did have a lot to do with it, not just a little. I think, uh, you know, being in the first class of Sam Proctor Fellows, uh, actually sitting at the feet of Dr. Proctor with his wisdom and then being in the class that I was in with, you know, the giants of the preaching world uh, really helped formate, form my formation. I mean, last night Bishop Alexander told you information and formation really go together. And you have to receive a certain amount of information so you can be formed into the ministry God has called you to be. So having, you know, having a, a mentor uh, who was respected and esteemed and who spent time with us. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, you know, we used to fly in like three or four times a year. And so some of our meetings were in the hotel and some of them were at campus. But being able to be accessible uh, to Dr. Proctor, to have access to him, um, and then my classmates who were my colleagues, I mean, Dr. Otis Moss and I to this day are still friends. And he's one of the sages of the, you know, of the faith. I was on the younger and Doc, Bishop Donald Hilliard and I were the youngest in the class. And so we were in the class with, you know, these giants that we had only read about. So to even be at the table was an honor. And now to be able to walk with them um, as colleagues is, um, is phenomenal. The United Experience brought us together. There were people that I would not have had the chance to sit down with um, for any length of time and any depth of experience. And so that was, that was tremendous. Lynette Sweet was president. Darrell Ward was uh, his assistant. And we uh, created this, really, this national family of, of colleagues uh, that the yoke won't easily be broken. Um, we're going to be lifelong friends. And uh, so that's how United helped me. It brought us together in a world that um, I may not have had contact with in, in one concentrated place ever again. Using um, the example that you have matriculated through United and it has benefited you greatly, what would you say to expectant students about coming to United? Well, I'd say that, you know, life is a journey and you have to be, whenever there's an opportunity that presents itself, uh, you have to, number one, go for it. And then you also have to create opportunities. So I would say that you have to seek application to United. Um, and I would say that it's a wonderful place to uh, matriculate. I think it's a, a place that doesn't put boundaries, but it really is kind of out of the box thinking. I think it was the first seminary that didn't put such tight reins on us to where we could be creative and theological. So it didn't lessen the academic and actually strengthen it and enhanced it because you're able to kind of explore to the wildest parts of your your um, academic imagination. And so I think that I would encourage them to do that. How has it helped you in being an ambassador? I know it's still relatively new, but what can you see the benefits of it? Well, it's only my 10th day on the job. So, <laughs> so uh, but you know, the connections, uh, you know, learning to connect the dots is important because so many of us who are in the clergy can live within our own world. You don't really have to go outside of your denomination, outside of your church, really. You know, in the black church world, you can be the king or the queen. Um, and really never have to go outside. What United did was it, it broadened the conversation and, and we had to learn how to connect the dots nationally. And so what I'm now getting ready to do is learn how to connect the dots globally. And it's many of the people that I was at the table with who are people that I will call when I'm going overseas uh, or who will call me and say, you know, I hear you're going to such and such a country and these are people that I work with. So it really, it broadens the platform mm -hmm. and it gets us out of the boxes of denominationalism, the boxes of myopia that many of us tend to live within. When Jesus said, go ye into all the world and teach what I have taught you, you have to number one, be willing to go into all the world. And number two, you have to have take some things that you've been taught and so at United, I've been taught some things, and now I have the opportunity to go into all the world. And so that is the wonderful formula for the mandate of Jesus Christ. And so that's what I do. I take Jesus with me. I take United with me. 
I take this new global uh, collegiality with me. If there was any certain thing that you would suggest that we at United would do to strengthen United to benefit students, what would that be? From my experience, I would change nothing. Interesting. I would change nothing. I had a very good experience. Um, you know, so I don't know where it is 20 years later, but I felt very much at home from the first day I was there. And, um, you know, when I left there feeling like my time had been spent in a worthwhile place. How did you feel as a black student at a white seminary being United Methodist predominantly white? Um, because we came in with such this powerful class, I mean, it was Johnny Youngblood, Otis <laughs> Moss, uh, Booth, Def Relief, who's now a bishop, um, you know, Hilt Helton, who became a bishop in the CME church. We were, you know, trailblazers don't look at what the picture is now. Trailblazers look at what it can be. Um, and so we were blazing a trail in a black church studies program it could have gone either way, but with the power that was at that table, we knew it was only going to go up. And so as we were there, other classes came in. I believe the Mitchell Fellow started, and, you know, so there was some overlap. And so we were on campus with the emerging voices of the 21st century. So I did not see white campus. I saw um, opportunity of a black program that was going to be phenomenal. And... So I, that's the world I looked in. I, I think you have to. I preach the sermon on vision. And vision is not looking through the natural eyes, but it's looking through the supernatural. It's not looking through the ordinary, but it's looking at the extraordinary. And I think every one of us at that table came in looking for the extraordinary. What was your text for that? <laughs> <laughs> I usually use the Isaiah 6. Um, when Isaiah's whole eyes were open, I quote the sermon titles, Lord, Open My Eyes. My kids say I've used it a whole lot of times. <laughs> they know it by heart. But it's about Isaiah's eyes being open, you know, to a new um, call, you know. And if you don't have that kind of vision where it's beyond the ordinary, you uh, drown in the place that you are. Um, I'm a swimmer, and I'm a long-distance swimmer. And so you learn to say, you know, how many laps do I have to do as opposed to, wow, this is a big pool. <laughs>